Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. This is the spot, the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. And we go to Ireland to visit with Jennifer <laughs> Cairns. Hello, hello. She is a bright spot, Brains. Let me tell you, this woman has is dealing with and has overcome multiple, when I say multiple, multiple chronic diseases. Uh, she is very strong in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. She believes in women being rebellious. She's an author, and she's also uh, unstoppable. So we want to welcome her to the edge and just really kind of take it all in because she's very full. Thank you so much for being <laughs> with me, Jennifer. How you doing? Yeah, so I'm good, April. Thanks very much for having me here. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's great, great to be here. So thanks for the for the lovely introduction as well. Um, as you said, I am Jennifer from Northern Ireland, um, and I am the founder of Rebel World, where basically I aim to empower, connect, and elevate women entrepreneurs who are neurodiverse or who have hidden disabilities. And we do this through a few different ways in the business. Um, one is through the Rebel Leader Institute, which is where I run training, workshops, programs, all of that kind of stuff, which it really aims to help entrepreneurs to create a business that suits them and their unique definition of success while growing a brand that ignites their confidence, their revenue, and their impact. And importantly, to do that without being fake, having to be perfect, or feeling less than. Um, I aim to elevate uh, via our podcast, our YouTube channel, our show, our magazine, and our books that we have. And at the heart of really everything we do, though, is the Lady Rebel Club. So that is our community and our movement that brings everything together so that we know that we're not alone, you know, we're, that you're around and surrounded by people who get it. Um, it allows us then to better inspire, empower, uplift, and to advocate for each other um, in the entrepreneurial and in the business space. That's, um, that's powerful. That's a lot of work. But, you know, yes. people have to really <laughs> identify with who they are. They have to uh, get their head around their ability or lack of a disability, mm -hmm. their challenges, their outside influences. They got to keep yes. their health up. So what do you say to a person that's really good? Firstly, would you mind sharing a few of the, the challenges that you live with um, just so people can have an idea Oh. Yes, no, not at all. That's grand. So yes, yeah, so I'm I'm a bit of a mixed bag, I like to say, because there's all kinds of things going on. So I am late diagnosed um, neurodivergent. Um, so I'm autistic. Um, uh, also have ADHD. I have um, blood cancer, which um, I only found out about uh, a couple of years ago as well. And uh, started the first round of treatment actually during the first lockdown. I have fibromyalgia. I have a couple of rare autoimmune disorders. One of them is called perineoplastic syndrome, which is actually a byproduct of the cancer where my, my cells are really being overly aggressive and attacking my nerve fibers. So I have a lot of loss of sensation in my hands and in my feet, especially on the right-hand side, side of my face, a bit of facial tics, dissociative seizures from it, things like that. Um, I have general anxiety disorder and also have post-traumatic stress disyndrome. And you, got a heart of, and you got a beautiful <laughs> smile and a heart of gold and a pretty blue bow. There yes, so you got to wear the bow. You got to have the bow now. <laughs> okay. So you look at yourself in the mirror and you see a very complicated individual. How do you keep yeah. yourself motivated to stay strong and, and stay positive? Well, I think for me, that's where, you know, being neurodiverse, uh, neurodivergent is, is a complex thing. Like right. anything explain, in life. Explain what that term is. Because yes, okay. Not... So uh, neurodiversity is really um, around the concept of, you know, our, how humans are, our neurocognitive um, ability. We all have strengths and weaknesses, right? Um, when you're neurodivergent, generally speaking, um, some of our things that we would struggle with would just, you know, be a wee bit more. 
Um, so we would be, you know, slightly atypical. A lot of the times it comes around things, you know, that people might be familiar with, like, you know, with focusing or maybe around how we engage with our environment. So it could be social, it could be communication, things of this nature. And each and every one of us is unique. We all have what, you know, um, I know a lot of doctors like to use and uh, the way that I like to look at it, which is we all have these individual spiky profiles, if you will, every individual. We all have those peaks and troughs, things that they were great at, things that we're not so great at. Um, and if in a neurodivergent brain, basically, like I said, there's just maybe a bit more of a, a space where things that we would struggle with, we would maybe struggle with a lot more than what would be sort of, you know, atypical, um, so to say. And that's okay. It just means that there's also some really things that we're really great at. Um, so like I said, it could be whether you're autistic, it also is like dyslexic, um, Tourette's, um, dyspraxia, um, you know, all different kinds of things like that. Which yeah, would fall into that category. But one thing that puzzles me is that with you having a variety of different challenges, how were they able to honestly, with integrity, uh, diagnose one thing versus the other? Sometimes people well, can't is... get a simple diagnosis and you've gotten multiple for mm. chronic diseases. You know, mm. you know, are you on a, a and I'm share as much as you'd like, but are you okay? On major pill cocktails because one I do is have some the other or I take some um mainly for the nerve pain and things that I have because I've had I have severe nerve pain with um, a couple of the conditions that I have, um, mainly from the perineoplastic syndrome and the you know the the blood cancer itself as well um but yeah i mean it, it is complex and this especially being a woman you know um women who are neurodivergent it's very common for us to do what's called masking especially when in like the adhd and autistic space um and really that simply means unlike unlike boys right you know we from a young age are you know trained for lack of a better word to say this is how we expect a woman you know to behave you know prim and proper and this is the social things that are acceptable boys can get a lot you know away with a lot more so really from a young age even though you feel very much like an outcast your your brain which is obviously very clever of it it's really sort of feeding off and picking up all of these things, all of these social cues that even though we might not really understand, it allows us to kind of mimic some of them. So it allows us to really blend in. And as we get older, you know, we get quite good at it. Now, the downside to masking is for us, you know, it's really, really stressful. And this is why such a high, you know, portion of, again, especially uh, women who are neurodivergent and especially those who have had a late diagnosis, have a lot of, um, you know, layover of conditions like fibromyalgia, um, anything re relating to the gastric area, IBS, a lot of autoimmune disorders and high but What anxiety. it does, it actually morphs into something else. Well, it causes, uh, you know, and even with fibromyalgia, for instance, it's really prevalent in the neurodiversity space um, with us as well. Um, and with fibromyalgia and a lot of conditions that now that they know from doing a lot of research, a lot of that is caused by different types of stress. Right. So long term, the long term stress of masking and having that pressure to constantly mask, you know, and not really ever getting a break from it because we don't know that we're masking, you know, you know, at, at the time, obviously, um, it puts such a pressure, such pressure on us that, um, you know, yes. even now, you know, it can be, it can be stressful. You know, like if I go to an event or if I do something, if I'm networking, especially if it's in real life and it's, you know, in a bigger space, where there's a lot of people there. It's very stressful and it could take me days or weeks really, you know, to physically get over that. Um, so how are you kind of coping with all of these challenges? I mean, you know, and again, share as much as you like. Um, do you have a support group? I know you have your online space with Facebook, you, uh, you, seeing a bunch of specialists. Uh, is it your clergy? Is it your, your goddess? Is it your puppy dog? Something has, <laughs> something has to give you solace. Something has to be a great distraction for you to continue to forge ahead. Well, I think for me, you know, I've always been the type of personality that a one of my superpowers, and I do believe I get a lot of this from my neurodiversity, is grit. I have, I am this one of the strongest people 
you will ever meet. And I've always been like that since a kid. Um, you know, and even when we were coming up to the, uh, you know, towards the end of 2019, my husband and I worked together in the business at the time and out of the blue, he had a stroke. So okay. I had to kind of reposition everything was in the midst of trying to figure out what we were going to do. Uh, and he, and, and his stroke was, was quite bad, had a lot of impact on him. Um, and why he was still down at the brain injury clinic two months after that happened is when I got my cancer diagnosis and two months after that is when COVID hit. So it was like, yeah, bam, bam, bam. But I was, I was ironically <laughs> quite calm through all of it. And together, you know, I do quite well in sort of crisis situations like that. I just always have the attitude as well that I've tried to instill in anyone, including my kids, is that it can always be better and it can always be worse. Uh, and for me, when I got the diagnosis, although I, of course, in no way was happy that I had cancer, the first thing that went through my mind was, thank you, Lord, it's not my kids. And that was all I could think about. And that was all I cared about at the time. So for me, yeah, I, you know, like I said, I wasn't happy about it, but it could have been far worse um, situation. It is, um, and you're still able to manage. So you manage a household, yeah. you um, go through your whole medical regimen. Is your husband still with you? He is, yes. And yeah. you're still supporting him and the kids and try to make a living? How'd you find time to write books? <laughs> I sleep sometimes, not very often. Wow. Well. Well. <laughs> no, but how did you find time to write books? You wrote not well, one, but two. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm part of an anthology series. So that has made it, you know, a bit easier because it's, it's obviously a chapter in um, one of the books. It's a whole series that we have called Becoming an Unstoppable Woman. Um, yeah, we have our right, own book then coming wait, wait, slow out. Slow down, well. slow down, slow down. What is the name of the book? I want to see it too. Yes, we have. Well, it's a series. So the first one is this one. So it was called Becoming an Unstoppable Woman. Okay. Um, and then we have a series. So this one was out probably about eight weeks ago. Um, so this is the entrepreneur one. And then in May, the mompreneur one comes out. So what is your contribution? What are you, what are you talking about in the pages of these books? Uh, in the first one, it's a bit more personal. So I talk a bit more about, you know, my um, late diagnosis with being neurodivergent about how when waves come crashing in life, um, you know, I tend to sort of, yes, maybe burn and turn to ash, but then rise like a phoenix, um, which was, was the name of my chapter. And just about how, again, I talk about, you know, being grateful um, that things can always be better and always having hope, you know, um, that, you know, things, then things can turn the corner. And then in the second book, I talk a little bit about the Lady Rebel Club aspect and how, how I struggled. And even though I've, you know, have been successful in different businesses that I've had, when I was really running the, con the consultancy and wanted to come online to do different things, I really struggled um, in a space and I was really made to feel and actually told by a coach directly that I was too much, that I had to tone down, that I shouldn't wear the funky gloves and the scarves on my head, you know, and be so animated when I speak uh, and all of this that nobody was going to take me seriously. And for years, I was really pressured to hide who I was, you know, I myself even at times would have worried and thought, oh, what are my clients going to think? You know, what is somebody going to say if they know I have fibromyalgia or I have a disability or, you know, I, I have a neurodiversity. Um, I started to see this pattern that it wasn't just me who was feeling this way, um, that this pressure is on all of us women and we are struggling with the weight of it. Um, you know, it's really holding us back we feel like there's almost this cookie cutter approach to building a business at times that we have to do it this way. A lot of times it's a very masculine way. You know, it's a very, you know, this is a corporate way. You have to do your nine to five and you have to do this and you have to do that. And it was only really over the past couple of years or so when I really started to say, look, this isn't, you know, this isn't working for me. Um, and I've started to figure out how to work in my business that actually suits me. You know, what times a day are best for me, how long I can work for in general, you know, before I need to take a break, allowing and building into my schedule recovery time. Um, so there's that aspect. And then you have the whole mental health aspect as well, right. because right. when we feel pressured and we are, you know, really told, don't be yourself, you know, hide who you are. 
how in the heck are we ever going to be able to really stand up, you know, shine our gold in our business, share everything that we have with the world that we need to share? It's impossible. We can't do it. So we feel stuck and we're stuck in that loop of really, you know, wondering what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? You know, what's wrong with us? You know, it, it must be something that we're doing. Why is this not working? Why are we not, you know, doing all the things that we want to do or scaling in the way? So how, the have, how has this helped you in building your platform for your podcast? Tell me a little bit about the podcast. Yeah, so the podcast is called Rebel Hour. Um, and it's really, again, just looking at all of this experience and, you know, a big part, again, of what um, everything that we're doing is about is elevating, you know, um, women like myself. So giving them that platform uh, and with the podcast, it's looking at uh, talking at them kind of from a business aspect as well and looking at how they're, you know, empowering or inspiring or innovating or creating change, you know, what is their mission with their business and their brand. And then with the YouTube channel, which launches this month, as well as with the magazine, the, the YouTube is more uh, looking at them as an individual. So we're looking at how they're, you know, they are unstoppable and how they, you know, came to run the business and, and the brand and do all the great things that they, that they do with themselves. Well, it takes a lot to be able to be balanced, um, to be motivated, to survive. What would you tell a person that's struggling right now on any level? What words of encouragement would you provide them? One of the things that I would definitely say is, and I, and I really do mean this with all of my heart, and it wasn't until I really started to believe these two, these two sentences, if you are, these two phrase, phrases, is that different is not less. Mm. You know, you know I work, I've worked in brand development for, for donkeys, right? And people used to pay me tens of thousands of dollars, you know, to help create that differential space for them. Different is a beautiful thing. You know, don't ever think that you're less for whatever your differences are. And the other thing that I would say is that we all have gold. Your gold is not going to necessarily be what my gold is, but we all have gold to share and do not ever, ever let anyone tell you, you know, and don't let yourself either. Don't accept it from yourself. Don't listen to that negative self-talk. You have gold to share. Everyone does. Um, difference is not less. And I think, because those can be applied to so many different people in any situation, and no, no matter who you are, right? Whether you have curly hair, straight hair, you know, you have a skin condition, you have, it doesn't matter, right? Um, there's always something that we feel is different about us. There's always maybe some way that we feel like we're less than somebody else. Um, but just take those two things to heart. The third thing that I would say is that it's great, of course, to listen to people and to get feedback, you know, in your business and when you're working on things, but oh my goodness, do not ever let anyone tell you that you are not enough. Mm -hmm. Yes, we might have to learn. Of course, there's always skills that we have to learn. You know, none of us, you know, are gifted and, and brilliant at absolutely everything. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, of course, yeah, of course, except for you. I'm right, yeah, except for me. You know, well, you. I understand what you're saying. And it's that conversation that I tell people that I have regularly with that board of directors running around in my head. What are you saying to yourself? Mm -hmm. You could talk yourself into a kerfuffle. You could talk yourself into a million dollars. You have to believe what you say. And you don't want that to be negative. You want to keep a good circle of influence around you. You want to stay mm -hmm. around positive people, people that share in your growth and your development, people that challenge you. You know, you may have a challenge, but, you know, they'll come to you and say, hey, Jennifer, I know you can do it no mm -hmm. matter what. You've got to have a cheering squad, yes. uh, Brains. And Definitely. if you don't, get rid of them. That's what I say. You don't need to have a lot of people in your inner circle. Everybody no. doesn't deserve a front row seat in your life. You know, they it's really better to have one diamond next to you, you know, than 50 people who... Just, just going to bring you down. Yeah, just yeah. going to bring you down. So exactly. you have brought us up in so many ways. Tell us how we can get in contact with you with the Lady Rebel Club, as well as purchase a copy of one of your books, Jennifer. Yes, well, you can go to our website. It's probably the best thing because you can find everything on there. And it's just ladyrebelclub.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, under the same, you know, if you, if you search that, um, you'll find it there as well. 
or if you can find me on Facebook um, or LinkedIn uh, on my profile, which is just uh, Jennifer Cairns. Um, and on LinkedIn is Jennifer L. Kearns. And again, you'll find all the links, but the website's probably the best because it has everything on it. You can find well, the books, you can find information about Lady Rebel Club and everything. All right. And in closing, Precious, what do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy really to be, I suppose, so that for, I guess if I had to just pick one, <laughs> I'm greedy. I'm very greedy. Um, I would, I would love for young, young girls to grow up knowing and not, not, I guess not feeling that I did and knowing that, like I said, the different isn't less because I think that so many of us grow up feeling that way. Um, and if there's even, you know, one woman that I can help change that feeling, um, and to make her realize that that's, you know, she doesn't have to feel that way, then, you know, I think that that's job done. Well, I think that you're at the top of your class. Thank you so much for sharing such intimate details with us in a heart-centered kind of way. You have really poured into our emotional intelligence and raised our relationship capital. Thank you so much. And I got my car all turned. <laughs> okay, look, Grace, this is what I need you to do, okay? I need you to go in love like and share and subscribe i'm raising those numbers they're looking great love like share and subscribe youtube instagram facebook blog talk um where else am i at linkedin i'm all over the planet okay? <laughs> everywhere and do the same thing <laughs> for jennifer i want you to go in and understand what neurodivergence is they're struggling you know and they want your support if nothing else, you know, they don't want your sympathy. They want your empathy. And the only way that you can be empathetic is if you understand. And the only way that you can understand is if you got information. And the only way that you can get information is if you try. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. it. That's it. So just break it down to the lowest common denominator and try. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, for being here with me and my brains on the edge. You are the best. And I love the bow. If anybody tells oh, you, thank look, you. <laughs> it's not gorgeous, you send them over to me. I got something for them. Okay? There you I go. Think you are gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks very much, April. Thanks very much for watching, brains. All right.